Hello everyone. I am Sangeeta Das, PhD scholar of Guwahati University. This video is a part of online lectures initiated by Geological Society of Assam. In this lecture, I'll be discussing about thyroid gland, its structures, hormones, functions, and regulations. From this lecture, I am expecting that my viewers will learn about structure of thyroid gland, hormones that are released by the thyroid gland, how the thyroid hormone is synthesized, what are the function of the hormones, how the regulation takes place. Let us talk about the anatomy of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland, being one of the largest endocrine gland, is a paired gland. It is present in either side of trachea, just below the larynx. The two lobes of the thyroid gland is joined by a narrow band of tissue called isthmus. A pair of parathyroid gland are also located on each thyroid lobe. Secondly, coming to the histological structure of the thyroid gland. Each thyroid lobe is made up of numerous lobules separated by fibrous tissue septum and each lobule is made up of aggregation of several large and small follicles. Each follicle is lined by a single layer of follicular cells resting on the basement membrane. Follicular cells may be cuboidal in shape, columnar or in square machine shape, depending upon its activity. If the follicular cells are cuboidal, they signify normal activity. If the follicular cells are columnar, they signify hyperactivity and square mass signifies inactive state of the cell. The colloid or the homogeneous material that fills the cavity inside the follicle is thyroglobulin, which is a glycoprotein. Thyroglobulin is synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum of follicular epithelium. Parafollicular cells or C cells are scattered between the follicular cells and basement membrane. It secretes calcitonin hormone. This hormone helps in calcium metabolism in the body. C cells may occur singly or in a group of 2 to 3. Now what are the hormones of thyroid gland? Thyroid gland releases two main hormones, triiodothyronine T3 or tetraiodothyronine or T4 or it is called thyroxine. Calcitonin is another hormone released by C cells. Thyroxine is produced in much larger quantity that, um, than triiodothyronine, but triiodothyronine is 5 to 10 times more active than T4. T4 and T3 are iodinated derivatives of tyrosine. In the figure given, you can see the structure of tyrosine, T3, T4 and reverse T3. T3 contains two tyrosine molecules and three iodine atoms, whereas T4 contain two tyrosine residue and four iodine atoms. The reverse T3 or the RT3 is a metabolically inactive form of thyroid hormone which is generated from the coupling of DIT with MIT. And regarding DIT and MIT, we'll be talking in our later slides. Here in this slide, you can see chemistry of thyroxine and formation of triiodothyronine. When iodine joins tyrosine in carbon-3 position, monoiodothyrosine is produced, whereas the second iodine that joins in the carbon-5 position of the same tyrosine residue to form T4 or diiodothyrosine. When MIT and DIT couples, it forms triiodothyronine. When DIT couples with MIT, it forms reverse triiodothyronine. When DIT couples with DIT, it forms thyroxine or tetraiodothyronine. Let 
did a study about biosynthesis of thyroid hormone, how T3 and T4 are produced. In the formation of T3 and T4, both dietary iodine as well as amino acid tyrosine is used. If we consider one follicular cell as shown in the figure, the membrane near the blood vessel is the basal membrane and the membrane facing towards the lumen is the apical membrane. Iodine is collected from the blood, production of thyroglobulin and releasing thyroglobulin into lumen, T3 and T4 is produced in the colloid, T3 and T4 is taken by the follicular cell with thyroglobulin to release to the blood. These are the steps that we will be discussing in detail in, the, in our later slides. We are coming to the first step of biosynthesis. In the biosynthesis process, iodide from GI tract is taken by the follicular cells with the help of sodium iodide importer. The follicular cells of the thyroid have unique ability to trap iodine from circulating blood. Iodine is co-transported with sodium ion at the basal surface of the follicular cell through sodium iodide importer. One iodide ion along with two sodium ion are co-transported. The protein called pendrin helps in transporting iodide out of the thyroid cell into the follicle. This step, synthesis and secretion of thyroglobulin, takes place simultaneously with trapping of iodine. Thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein that is synthesized by rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus of the follicular epithelium. Its molecule of thyroglobulin contains about 70 tyrosine residues, which are used as substrate for iodination. Thyroglobulin acts as a template for thyroid hormone synthesis as well as it serves for intrathyroidal storage of iodine. In this slide, it is a step three that is oxidation of iodine. It is the iodine which is taken from the blood by the follicular cell is not the exact form which can be used. This iodide that is taken from the blood needs to be activated or it needs to be oxidized. It is quickly oxidized into active iodide and the reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme thyroidal peroxidase. In the lumen, the next step is adenation of tyrosine. Now iodide that is oxidized to iodine, it is in the lumen. Thyroglobulin that is produced by the endoplasmic reticulum will also come to the lumen. Thyroglobulin content tyrosine that we have already mentioned earlier. The receptor of the activated iodine are the tyrosine residues of the thyroglobulin. The active iodine first binds to the carbon 3 position of the phenolic ring of the tyrosine, replacing one hydrogen to yield 3 monoiodotyrosine, that is MIT. A second iodine may attach at the position carbon 5 of the same tyrosine residue, resulting in conversion of MIT to 3,5-diiodotyrosine, that is DIT. Formation of MIT to DIT is determined by the amount of active iodine available in the iodine pool. Next step is coupling of iodotyrosine. In the previous slide, we have discussed that thyroglobulin is produced, thyro, uh, thyroglobulin content, tyrosine. Tyrosine is iodinated in the lumen. Now, monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine is produced. Now, this monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine are two unstable compounds and they will couple uh, by oxidative condensation. When MIT couples with DIT, it forms T3, that is triiodothyronine, and when DIT couples with DIT, it forms tetraiodothyronine or T4. In both the cases, coupling occurs within the thyroglobulin molecule and the same enzyme, thyroidal peroxidase, catalyzes the coupling reaction. Till now, we have studied that uh, the hormone uh, T3 and T4 is produced. And the next step is it will be stored. Once the thyroglobulin has been iodinated, it is stored in the lumen of the follicle as colloid for several months. Each thyroglobulin molecule contains up to 30 thyroxine and a few T3 molecules. This can meet the body requirement for one to three months. The next step is deiodination of thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin 
undergoes protolysis to release the thyroid hormone thyroglobulin itself will not go out of the follicle or to the blood instead the hormones that is produced and is in the thyroglobulin it will be cleaved from the thyroglobulin molecule and it will go out to the blood thyroglobulin itself is not released to the circulating blood after the use in the cell the iodine of the t3 and t4 is released which can be reused however the mit and dit that failed to form t3 and t4 release iodine to supply active iodine into the iodine pool of the cell and iodine is cleaved from the thyroglobulin by enzyme deiodinase this is the last step reabsorption and hydrolysis of thyroglobulin as mentioned earlier after the complete adenation of thyroglobulin molecules with complete structural components like mit dit t3 and t4 it moves towards the follicular cell in the follicular cell thyroglobulin molecules are hydrolyzed by lysosomal enzymes making t3 t4 mit and dit free from the thyroglobulin t3 and t4 are secreted to the circulating blood for transportation into the target organs but mit and dit never escape from the epithelial cell and are deiodinated by the enzyme deiodinase the iodine this formed is released from the thyroidal colloid while the tyrosine is supplied to the cellular amino acid pool and this is called iodine cycle Now let us come to the functions of the thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone have numerous roles in our body. In case of growth and development, one of the most spectacular action of thyroxine is the stimulation of metamorphosis in amphibian larva. Thyroxine has stimulatory effect on general growth and maturation of organ by increasing sensitivity of tissue to growth hormone. The endoskeleton is the target of the thyroid hormone. Growth and eruption of teeth in vertebrates, growth of Horns in deer and fin rays in fishes are under the thyroidal control. In growing child, thyroid hormone is necessary for the promoting growth and development of the brain during fetal life and for the first few years of the postnatal life. In case of growing child, if the child is hypothyroid, the rate of growth is retarded. Also, if the child is hyperthyroid, excessive skeletal growth occurs, causing the child to become taller at an earlier age. Secondly, what are the functions of thyroid hormone in our body physiology? On respiration, thyroid hormone regulates oxidative phosphorylation, increases the rate of ATP synthesis, and increases basal metabolic rate. On GI tract, thyroid hormone stimulates motor activity of the stomach and intestine, thereby accelerating peristalsis. Also, thyroid hormone increases secretion of HCL from gastric gland and increases rate of absorption of digested food. On cardiovascular system, thyroid hormone play a role in increasing the heart rate, causes vasodilation in most of the tissues, causing increases in blood flow, increases arterial blood pressure. On skeletal muscle, slight increase in the T4 level increases the muscular vigor, but hypersecretion makes the muscle weak. This condition is thyrotoxic myopathy. This myopathy leads to muscle weakness, muscle tissue breakdown, fatigue, heat in intolerance, etc. In case of untreated thyrotoxic myopathy, the person may suffer from difficulty in swallowing and respiratory distress. What are the function of thyroid hormone in our body metabolism? Thyroid hormone increases protein synthesis in almost all tissues of the body. Thyroid hormone regulates all aspects of carbohydrate metabolism, including rapid uptake of glucose by the cell, enhances glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. Essentially, all the aspects of fat metabolism are also enhanced under the influence of thyroid hormone. Lipids are mobilized rapidly from the fat tissue, which decreases the fat storage of the body. Increased thyroid hormone decreases the concentration of cholesterol, phospholipid, and triglycerides in plasma. Conversely, decreased thyroid secretion greatly increases plasma concentration of cholesterol, phospholipid, and triglycerides.
Here, most importantly, coming to the role of thyroid hormone in sexual functions, thyroid secretion has to be normal for normal sexual function. In case of men, lack of thyroid hormone causes loss of libido and excessive secretion of the hormone, however, sometimes causes impotency. In women, lack of thyroid hormone often causes menorrhagia and polymenorrhea, that is excessive and frequent menstrual bleeding. In hypothyroidism, oligomenorrhea may occur, which is reduced bleeding. Menorrhagia is the condition of abnormal heavy bleeding at the menstruation. Polymenorrhea is a condition of shorter menstrual cycle, like shorter than 21 days. Oligomenorrhea is a condition of infrequent menstrual period occurring at the interval greater than 35 days. Thyroid hormone also have a very important effect in our body weight. Increase in thyroid hormone leads to decrease in body weight and decrease in thyroid hormone causes increase in body weight. Effect of th thyroid hormone in central nervous system, if we see thyroid hormone in general increases the working of brain. It cause, in, in case of hypothyroidism, it decreases cerebration. Also in contrast, hyperthyroid individuals have nervousness and may and many psychoneurotic tendencies like anxiety. In our sleep cycle also, thyroid hormone have a very important role. Hyperthyroid individuals often feel tired, but because of excitability effect of thyroid hormone on the synapses, it is difficult to sleep. On the other hand, hypothyroid individual sleeps 12 to 14 hours a day. We are coming to the regulation of thyroid hormone. Regulation of thyroid hormone is very important. Normal functioning of thyroid hormone is very important as we have discussed in the function. So let us go in detail about the regulation of thyroid hormone. Before beginning the regulation, I would like to remind you that we have hypothalamus in brain, also we have pituitary gland and there are certain factors from hypothalamus which directs the pituitary to produce or release stimulating hormone or inhibiting hormone. Then this uh, stimulating and inhibiting hormone will finally direct the respective endocrine glands to produce the hormones. As shown in the previous diagram, hypothalamus will be producing thyrotropin releasing hormone and thyrotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus will increase as the secretion of TSH from the pituitary. Thyroid function is regulated by variation in the circulating level of pituitary TSH. TSH is inhibiting, inhibited in a negative feedback fashion by circulating free T3 and T4. When there is lack of thyroxine in blood, it stimulates the hypothalamic area by positive feedback mechanism to release TSHRH, that is thyroid stimulating hormone releasing hormone, which is an active hypothalamic factor to increase TSH formation. This causes the increased production and supply of TSH to thyroid follicle, which in turn accelerates the biosynthesis of T3 and T4. On the other hand, excessive thyroxine in blood stimulates hypothalamus in negative feedback way to release TSH-IH that is an inhibitory hypothalamic factor which decreases the TSH production and secretion. This causes decrease in the rate of biosynthesis of T3 and T4 in thyroid gland. And this is all about the regulation of the thyroid hormone. This is how thyroid hormone is regulated. Dear viewers, I came to the end of my lecture and if there is any query, you can contact me in my email ID.